Hi, YouTube family. The scoop is hot today. I'm Patty Jackson. I'm your auntie of pop culture. We start off with a hug, so come on, let's... Mm. Let's hug it out and get ready. It's not cute not knowing, and now we're going to know. We're going to start off with Cardi B and her lawsuit against blogger Tasha K. Now the blogger has to pay Cardi B $4.2 million. I think it was a lesson that they wanted to send that you may have a channel, but if you're filled with negativity, and hate, and a lot of people thrive on that. You gotta be careful what you say about people. For you can't just go around and pull stories out of the air and think it's funny and saying, oh, I lied. No, because these are people with families. And I don't care if you don't like a Cardi B. What she did to Cardi was wrong. Cardi B may not be your cup of tea. Well, go on over there and drink another cup of tea. Because now, she got to pay $4.2 million that I'm sure she doesn't have. You can file for bankruptcy to get out of it. But I think that judgment was sent to bloggers coming after the Tasha case. Watch what you say. If you're mean-spirited, because some people just get fueled up on negativity, you need to change your ways and be just a little more responsible. And that's what that judgment ultimately came down to. $4.2 million? She ain't got it. She ain't got it at all. But that judgment, this is going to be interesting. The Janet Jackson documentary, I can't, I can't wait. I do. This is what you need to know. It's this Friday and Saturday on Lifetime and a and &E. Two hours each night. It's a four-hour documentary. Produced by Randy and Janet Jackson. This is Janet Jackson and her words, her story, her truth. And boy, oh boy, are we going to find out a lot about Janet Jackson. Some of the highlights include when she married James DeBarge at 18 years old. And she tears up. Having a problem with her weight since her days as Penny on Good Times, being fat shamed. Was there a rivalry with Brother Michael, who she just refers to as Mike in the documentary? She admits that their relationship changed around the time of Thriller, but she says growing up, he would call her a pig, a horse, a cow. Oh, he would say it jokingly, but always be mindful of people who say, I was only playing. Watch them. Watch them. I don't care who they are. Watch them. She talked about a very traumatic childhood and how the older brothers would taunt and pee on Randy. This is the part that got me. Friday <laughs> and Saturday on Lifetime at A&E. We are going to be shocked. I know this is going to be trending. What She's telling her story. She is telling her truth. And she's got a lot more to say. Lifetime and A&E. Now, Friday night, right after part one of the Janet Jackson documentary, it's Kay Michelle with My Killer Body. The singer is known for having a fabulous body, but the numerous plastic surgeries that she got, she had to get to get that body almost killed her. The illegal butt injections, she almost died and she's had some work done on her butt, her teeth, her face. She doesn't even kind of like look like herself because she started doing all the plastic surgery and altering her look. In the need for perfection, she almost died. What we're going to see Friday night on Lifetime is a sneak peek. Because um, she has this show coming on Lifetime starting February 3rd, where she talks with other women and men in their search for perfection and how they almost died. Instead of doing 
diet and exercise. You got people running around here. You don't know what they're putting in your butt. You don't know what they're putting in. It could be semen. People's butts drooping, dropping, stuff all hard. You don't know what it is. She talks about it. I have a very funny K. Michelle story because she's on this search for the perfect body. But I interviewed her twice and neither time was interesting nor fun. She came in here with a little stank attitude. And I said, I never want to talk to her again. Because you're doing all this to your body, but sometimes your attitude, you got to fix your attitude. And I'm going to tell you something. Some people are where they are in life for a reason. You know, she wants to sing. She, she got a voice. Wants to be a country singer. She wants to be this. Girl, that attitude was a mess. A hot mess. I said I never wanted to interview her again. They say that Adele's shows in Las Vegas was headed for disaster from the start. They spent millions Caesar's Palace with a set designer and creating this set that Adele just decided she didn't like. She is getting in her own way. For by canceling these shows, she is proving at the age of 30, she ain't ready for the big time. You're either going to rump the big dogs or stay on the porch. Adele, you're going to have to stay on the porch because you're not ready. You need to call up Celine Dion. You need to call up Barbara Streisand and say, Barbara, Barbara, you need to talk to some of these veterans. Either you're going to do it or you're not. When you become known as a performer who's canceling out and stuff, people are going to start canceling you and they're not going to spend their hard-earned money on foolishness. I like Adele. But you know, she, she sings. She's got this beautiful voice. So they want to add some dazzle. Because it's like you just standing there singing and it ain't like you're out here dancing. So you're going to like add some glitz and stuff to make it. She don't want none of that. She just want to stand there and sing. A Vegas residency is not for you. Can we give a shout out to Method Man? I know y'all going to say, Pat, you just love Method Man. Yes, I love Clifford, but he is doing his thing on Power Book 2 and Mary J. Blige. I just got a chance to see last Sunday's episode. There's nothing like a good at the table cuts out. Think about the color purple, Whoopi Goldberg, when she told off Mr. Think about the scene and why did I get married with uh, Jill Scott. This scene, <laughs> and last Sunday's episode, it was epic. But kudos to Mary J. Blige and Method Man. Method Man was not in that scene, but I'm just enjoying him, his role, his acting on Power Book 4. Tiffany Haddish, she was on The Tonight Show last night with Jimmy Fallon, and she talked about her recent DUI. She looks great, by the way. She looked, I, I love her rocking that. That, that, that blonde thing. So Tiffany said, you know, after breaking up, I'm looking for a new man. You know, and I was praying for a man and four men in uniform showed up. You see, for it was four cops who showed up when she had to sleep off that high. You gotta be careful what you pray for. If you're gonna just sit here, you can't just say, I want a man. Mm -mm. You gotta be specific about that man. You can't say, I want a woman. Mm -mm. You must be specific in your prayers because you don't want to get somebody else's woman, somebody else's man. You don't want to get a nut. Be very specific in your prayers. But Tiffany had it, um, had a good time laughing it up with Jimmy Fallon. And she says that she and her lawyers are going to work all that DUI stuff out and it's going to be okay. Actor Michael Madsen, he was in... The Kill Bill movies, you know him when you see him. He recently suffered a tragedy in his family with his 26-year-old son committing suicide. Queen Latifah, she's finally talking about Chris North being gone from her show, The Equalizer, and she says it hurt. He was part of the family. They got to figure out how they're going to go on, who's going to replace them, replace him, but she understands the need because he was never charged. He was just accused, but it was enough to derail his career. She says she understands the importance of listening to victims. Megan Good says, going through this divorce with Devon Franklin is one of the most painful things she has ever experienced. 
I think there was a lot of love there, but they were two very different people because she's still out here showing off all her goodies. And I just think it just it, it just didn't go. And hopefully that the both of them will find peace. Elton John in the U.S. resuming his tour. He got COVID. I guess he said, I stayed over here in my little bubble in England and get sick. Come over to the United States and get COVID. Hopefully he's going to get well soon so he can resume his tour. In a recent interview with Stephen Colbert, Dionne Warwick sat down. Yes! Auntie Dion. She talked about Sidney Poitier and she says that she ran into him in the 60s before she became Dionne Warwick and he thought that, that Dion was stalking him. <laughs> And she admitted that she was kind of sort of stalking him because she saw this tall, dark, handsome guy. It was like, whoo, who's that? Where's he going? Child, she starts stalking him. And, you know, Sydney was tall. Turned around and said, excuse me, are you stalking me? Where are you going? What do you want? And she said subsequently they would run into each other. And, you know, she became famous by then. And he would still say, excuse me, where are you going? Are you stalking me? I thought that was a funny story that she shared. Uh, we're, we're over the 50,000 mark. Thank you. Thank you for the love yesterday. I appreciate it. Tell a friend, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Thanks for joining us. It's not cute, not knowing. And now you know, I'm Patty Jackson. I'm your auntie of pop culture.